Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the King Island Council Ordinary Meeting uh, for the month of August 2023. Today's date is Tuesday, 15th of August 2023. I call the meeting to order and declare the meeting open at 3.02pm. Just a reminder to all, please put your mobile phones on silent uh, or turn them off uh, for the duration of the meeting so we're not interrupted. That would be appreciated. Thank you. Tribute to Grassy. Uh, this month we've brought the King Island Council meeting to Grassy uh, as a tribute to both the reopening of the mine and the concurrent revival of our historic Grassy Township. We last held a council meeting here about six years ago. Uh, so our return is overdue uh, and it is great to be with uh, you all this afternoon. Thanks to Grassy constituents and mine workers uh, for coming along this afternoon in support. We're a small council and we're certainly not a perfect council, but we know who we work for we work for you, the ratepayers, and we do our best to serve you. It's always your prerogative to attend council meetings, kick our tyres and make sure that we are properly representing you. As a council, we have much catch-up work to do here in Grassy. The oval out the back is a good example, but we're working on it and we will certainly be providing more council resources and services to Grassy in the future, commensurate with the continued revival and growth of the town. Item number one is qualified advice. Pursuant to section 65 of the Local Government Act of Tasmania 1993, qualified advice has been received on all agenda items with the exception of item 8, which we'll discuss. Item 2, uh, we'll scroll through attendance and apologies. I welcome all councillors and staff uh, in attendance uh, here today. We have two councillor apologies. Councillor Anna Healy sends her apologies uh, and compliments. Uh, councillor Serena Layla also sends her late apology and compliments. Uh, councillor Gina Green is away on a leave of absence at the moment. So we're three councillors down tonight. We're six of nine councillors. So just confirm we have a quorum. Six of nine is a quorum. We are good to continue and we are good to, con we are good to transact council business. Staff apologies. Do we have any staff apologies? Uh, those that need to be here tonight no, appears are here. Uh, Helen, can we do a comments check please with Helen? Okay, we, thank you. We, we can see you when you're brought up. Thank you very much. Uh, media attendance, uh, as, as per usual procedure, the, uh, the, the proceedings are being recorded this afternoon, maybe even filmed by the look of that camera there. Public attendance, uh, I welcome the public in attendance this afternoon and also to those who will listen to the subsequent recording afterwards. Uh, next up is the opening statement. Could everyone please stand? Councillors, to begin this meeting, I ask you to stand in silence to pray or reflect on our responsibilities to the people of King Island. We begin today by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today and pay our respects to their elders past and present. We extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders peoples here today. Thank you. Please resume your seats. Moving on to uh, item three. Item three is presentations. There are no presentations today. Item four is public question time. If any member of the grassy public, in particular here today in that gallery, wishes to ask a question without notice of the council, I will permit a maximum of 15 minutes question time. Is there anyone who would like to ask her? Please step forward. Yeah, okay. uh, Ernie, just, yeah, Ernie, just come forward to the, to the microphone so we can record your question. And uh, the chair acknowledges Ernie Blakeman, a long-standing stalwart of grassy. Uh, Ernie, please ask your question, sir. Uh, I'd like to know the council's progress in uh, our street, streets, footpaths in Grassy. There's a significant uh, increase in our rates in Grassy. Uh, there's a lot more ratepayers. I feel as if the council should step up and do a lot more in our community. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Ernie. Can we answer that tonight or will we take that on notice? We might take that on notice because we've only got half that update, so we'll provide that yeah. in full. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. So more questions of that nature might be asked later on too when sure. we do our works update for the month. Yep. Uh, so, so Ernie, we'll give you a, a, a fuller response and we'll take the question notice and give you a fuller response. Some of what you uh, just asked might be answered later in the meeting when we go into current works um, and, and upcoming works, etc. Uh, but otherwise we'll, we'll get back to you with a formal response. Um, and mindful of my, my opening intro, we are definitely intending to do more and provide more council services to Grassy, commensurate with the increased traffic, throughput, population and growth of the town. Uh, we we recognise we have a bit of catching up to do there as well. Are there any more questions? Uh, please, you feel free, welcome, don't, don't be intimidated. Uh, if you like to ask a question, 
You're very welcome to ask a question. The Chair recognises Max Butcher, another long-standing uh, stalwart of Grassy. Max, sir, please ask your question. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mayor, Mayor Marcus. Um, I think it may be uh, covered at some, some stage during the meeting, but if some of us may, may or may not be aware that there's been a planning directive about attenuation zone around the mine, and uh, I would like uh, perhaps Robin might be able to uh, explain to uh, us exactly what's involved in that. Thank, thank you for your question, Max. So I'll just uh, start off by making a statement and then I'll hand over to Robin to talk in some technical detail about that. But it's important I read this statement first just to put this issue in context. The State Government Planning Minister last week issued a planning directive to immediately impose a te an attenuation zone over Grassy, which covers the township and surrounds out to two kilometres. This came as an unexpected and concerning surprise for the Council because it has now been implemented much earlier than we were planning for. This was not our decision as a Council, nor one we supported, recommended or asked for. It has been imposed on us. That being said, we do receive planning directives regularly and we are compelled to comply. This planning directive is complicated, so we will continue to unpack and decode what the new restrictions may be uh, and, and what those restrictions may be imposed on us as a Council and a planning authority. However, we think we are already able to alleviate some of the immediate concerns, uh, which you will ask about today, and Robin will do her best in a minute to explain some of those technical aspects after me. Grassy, of course, is our second biggest King Island township and is currently undergoing a development revival commensurate with the reopening of the mine and increasing population. As a council, we understand the desires and expectations of the Grassy community about future development, and we will do our best to support it. Uh, I'll now hand over to Robin Barwick, our Council Development Services Officer. Robin, over to you. OK, and I apologise because I've got my back to you. No, that's... OK, if I just swing around a bit, we'll see if you can still hear me. Yep, I'll just swing around so you can hear me a bit better, sorry. So, what this planning directive is, in our planning scheme, we do currently have a form of an attenuation code. So if you're working in the rural resource zone, there are already some requirements for if you're doing something that could have environmental impact or environmental harm. So it does require it to be away from sensitive use. So just to let you know, so I think one of the starting points is here is one of the questions that was asked of me, what is a sensitive use? Because the attenuation zone applies to a sensitive use. So a sensitive use means a residential use or a use involving the presence of people for extended periods except in the course of their employment, such as a caravan park, childcare centre, dwelling, hospital or school. And that definition is in the planning scheme. So what the attenuation code is, it basically identifies uses that ha um, could have an environmental impact or, could in or create an environmental harm. So it doesn't mean it's going to, but it's a way of just identifying something that could. And then they are usually managed under the Environmental Management Environmental Management Control, I've put it around the wrong way now, Environmental Management Pollution and Control Act. And so what they'll have is there are levels of activity within that. So for example, if you had a quarry and it's only doing up to 5,000 cubic metres in a year, it's a level one so council controls it. Anything bigger than that, or something that's doing crushing or blasting, because the, the attenuation code does relate to the mine, sorry, Chaz, but that's what it relates to, that becomes a level two. So it's under the control of the EPA, so the Environment Protection Authority. So they manage all of those environmental impacts, they apply all the conditions to it. So what we're trying to do with this is just um, basically making sure that those things that could cause an environmental impact. Now, environmental impact doesn't mean that you're out there polluting anything. It could just be noise. It could be fumes. So, for example, you could have a body work in the middle of town and that needs attenuation around it because it's going to make noise and fumes. So, basically, um, I'll have a train of thought on me then. So, basically, what happens is the attenuation code is going to make sure that things can work together. So what we're going to look at is that the use that's creating the, 
we'll call it the issue, that those impacts are minimised. So they're not going to affect the other people around it. So it's not going to affect the sensitive users around it. But at the same time, we've got to make sure that those sensitive users don't stop the mine doing what it needs to do. So that's the whole purpose of this. So what it's basically saying now that we've got this attenuation around it, and just to say that this attenuation code will come in when we go to the Tasmanian planning scheme, which will probably be in about, they're telling you, about nine months' time. Um, this code will come in. So it's just coming nine months earlier than we expected it to. And the code, when it does come in, will apply island-wide to lots of users, not just to, when I say island-wide, it identifies users and then applies attenuation. So it won't be just to the mine for Grassy, it will be the mine at Narra Cooper, quarries and things in other places. So all it's doing is saying, okay, so if you want to do a sensitive use in Grassy, then there's some things that you need to do. So you've got to basically show us that the impacts of the mine aren't going to affect what you're doing. So if you're going to build a house, a new house, you may have to, for example, design your footings a little bit different so that you don't get vibration affecting the house. You might have to put in a bit um, of extra glazing just to help prevent noise and things. So it's really just looking at things like that. So it's not as scary as you probably think. There are some things that we're going to have to do and initially it is going to be a bit of testing because we haven't got any um, supporting documentation that we were hoping to have perhaps when it came in. Um, the other thing to remember too is that if you have got an existing house that you can still do additions to it. So you can extend your house by 50% or 100 square metres. So if you're extending a house by 100 square metres in grassy, you've probably just doubled the size of your house for a lot of them. Um, I think that's probably pretty well it, unless anybody has got any further questions. I probably have got one. Would you, would, would you like to please yeah. step up to the microphone and just um, introduce us? Oh, Lucinda. Chair acknowledges Lucinda, again another great contributor to King Island's tourism industry and, and local resident. I'd just like to ask a question because we've actually, as Council knows, we've got two development applications in front of you at the moment. With the attenuation zone that came in on the 11th of August, will our um, development application still be looked at as far as um, the Council's concerned based on the fact that they were lodged before that date? Uh, Robin, if that, that's it. You've no, nothing further to add. Uh, are there any, any other questions uh, Grassy residents uh, would like to ask? Okay, we'll declare public question time over and we'll move on to the next item. The next item is declaration of interest, item five. Uh, are there any declaration of interest tonight? Noting the agenda contents, Councillor Allen. Yeah, I have one for the um, sponsorship application yeah, for the Yeah, 17.4, same as the Deputy Mayor. 4. Thank you very much. I think we're going to be in the same position as last council meeting where we're going to lose our quorum and run out of numbers on that one, so on that, um, on that item. Just may I ask a question of that, Mayor, um, just the likelihood of that that might reoccur meeting after meeting. Um, is there a situation where um, the decision can be delegated to the general manager and I think a decision of that nature was made um, many councils ago to do with something to do with the beef industry? 